you often see the occasional rage quit. Because they're on the other side of the computers on the other side and you can see them and you're yelling at them to stop throwing grenades and yet they still keep throwing grenades. There was us down the back playing Battlefield, um, there was a section playing World of Warcraft. Unfortunately, four play games closed in 2012. It's Paulie. I'm Bryce. And welcome to Game Talk, where each week we talk about different gaming related subjects. Now, last week you may have noticed this t shirt hanging from the back. If you didn't notice it, well, there it is. And there's a logo on it. The logo is for our old local land centre called Four Play Games, and it was located in Scarborough, which is a suburb in Perth. Four Play Games was open from around 2004 till 2012, it had a variety of games catered to tourists, local gamers and it was run by an amazing group of people. Today's episode is talking about the nostalgia and the memories we have of four play games. Now before we get started, we we're gonna start with a quick slideshow. So let's take a stroll down memory lane. We hope you enjoyed that slideshow. Now, if any of you have ever been to a land center, land party, or esports event, comment below. You understand the environment that you're in when you're in one of these uh, events. Gaming by yourself is okay, but when you're gaming with a group of people, there's something about the atmosphere that completely changes and heightens the gaming experience. Bryce, when did you first go to Four Play Games? 2008 was around the time I started going to four-player games. It was already well established. There was lots of uh, set groups in, uh, you know, everyone's favourite game. You know, like there was groups of like five or six people sitting at one uh, set of tables. There was us down the back playing Battlefield. Um, there was a section playing World of Warcraft. Who plays World of Warcraft though? <laughs> It was a great environment. I mean, they had all the PC games. One of the special things that they would do on occasion would be an overnight LAN party where you would play all night and they'd often have console games, other sorts of games and prizes included. We'd play everything from Battlefield, Counter-Strike, Mario Kart, World of Warcraft, League of Legends, all the games you can think of. It was a really great environment to be able to play in a safe place, know that you are amongst good people. A lot of the community still keeps in contact today. Bryce, what were your other favourable memories, whether it be playing other people or I think it was, memorable events? Even in between games, it was everyone getting together and eating, you know, one of the, you know, 12 pizzas that would be stacked there. We'd have big pizza nights. Yeah, pizzas, you know, everyone just sort of mingling, having fun, you know, play a few, few hours of games and, you know, you all chill, you have a meal. Anyone who has been to a land centre knows... Knows the atmosphere can get a little bit spicy. Everyone starts getting loud. Everyone starts really getting passionate about their games. Um, at times, you'll hear swearing at each other. It's not um, uncommon uh, to see players within a land centre verbally uh, communicate and express their their emotion of mm -hmm. the game in all sorts of colourful language. Yeah. You often see the occasional rage quit. Mm -hmm. People that are really invested in their game absolutely are losing it. And and I think everyone has a um, equal passion of passionate hate for people who are natives. Yeah. You know they're terrible. They're annoying. They, no one wants to play with a native because they're on the other side of the computers on the other side, and you can see them. And you're yelling at them to stop throwing grenades. And yet, they still keep throwing grenades. There aren't too many downsides to playing in a land centre. However, screening, I think, is probably the oh, major yeah. major thing that even today occurs in gaming tournaments. Screening, that's when you're looking at someone else's monitor. The gaming community from 4Play Games is quite diverse and has grown unbelievably. 
a number of the members have pursued their careers in gaming yep. and tech-related subjects. So the Gaming Center was really a great place for people to find their passion and pursue it. Back when we were gaming, gaming wasn't seen as an actual profession. It was still a get off that video game, mm. stop wasting your time, where today you can often see university courses that are gaming-related, a lot of gaming design jobs, graphic design, audio, so many aspects of gaming, this billion-dollar industry just weren't around. Some of these people have then pursued it and this really all goes back to the owners of the, uh, the land center who really did a fantastic job of looking after everyone, making sure they had a great place to enjoy themselves. We all spent many yeah. years and countless hours down there. As we mentioned, we've made many lifelong friends because of this land center. Yeah. Bryce and I often enjoyed to do was to uh, play other people in the land center. Yeah. We met many new people because we'd often just challenge strangers and half the time I didn't know any of their names yeah. because I would just know their screen name. What Bryce is referring to is the alias or the gaming alias which we all use. Now, what's your gaming alias? It's Happy Camper. Happy Camper. Gamers may know me as Eastside, but of course, you know, you've got all these gamer names and these names have actually stuck with the community members to this day where we still refer to individual members with their nicknames and gamer aliases. Gamers are special, they're very caring people. Their love of gaming is, is amazing. Unfortunately, 4Play Games closed in 2012. This was probably just uh, a couple of years before eSports really started to become popular. Personally, 4Play Games holds some significance to myself as one of the, uh, the workers there inspired me to pursue a, a career in IT. I went back, to, after going to uni for economics and business, I was inspired then to pursue a career in IT and I have been happily following my passion ever since. So it was because of these people, this community, that I was then inspired to do so and I'm grateful for that opportunity as well. We want you to comment if there's a LAN experience that you've had that you'd like to shout out. If you're a Full Play Games member, comment on your most favourable, your, your best experience, what you enjoyed the most. And also relating to Game Talk, if you guys have a topic that you'd like us to discuss, we're going to have some more panel members in a couple of weeks. Drop a comment below and we will get to uh, hopefully discuss your topic. Once again, from Bryce and myself, we'll see you next time and have a lag-free day.